let's call the meeting to order. Um, Tom, do you feel you need to go through the thing again? I don't know that I need to go through the protocols, but for um, uh, to make sure we're covered, I should read the uh, read the remote meeting language. Um, the city administrator has determined that it is not practical or prudent to conduct an in-person city council meeting due to the local state of emergency and social distancing guidelines. Accordingly, the city council will participate in this meeting via an electronic meeting, and city council meeting will be conducted under Minnesota State Statutes 13D.021 at the date and time uh, tonight. Uh, to the extent practical, members of the public may attend um, based on the published link for this meeting. And looking at those that are in attendance, everybody's fairly seasoned meeting goer. So I, Mr. Mayor, I don't think it's necessary to go through the meeting protocols. Okay. All right, well, with that, we've called the meeting to order. So let's rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States, United States, States of America. America. To the Republic, the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God yeah. indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice Okay, any changes to the agenda? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor, I would like to note for the viewing audience that we did get through um, all of the reports uh, during the work session. Um, except for police. Except for police, because Brady is the star of the show as the mayor. Thank you. Okay, uh, for, uh, any, uh, any motions to adopt motion the agenda? Motion to approve agenda. It's a motion by Timmerman. Second. It didn't catch, was that Bryce? Yes. All right, second by Bryce. Uh, every vote's a roll call vote. Amanda, you were going first with every vote tonight, so go ahead. <laughs> I'll vote aye as well. Kate. Aye. <clears throat> Bryce. Aye. Josh. Aye. All right. Agenda's passed. Oath of office. Um, due to uh, the nature of um, conducting oaths of office in a virtual environment, it's, it's complicated. There's a need for a live signature from candidate on their um, oath at the time that it's administered and so the oaths of office were actually administered back on January 6th but for the viewing audience we did videotape it and Mr. Mayor with your permission would play it now. Please repeat after me. I. I. Bryce Schenke. Bryce Schenke. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota, and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota, and that I will, and that I will, faithfully execute, faithfully execute, and discharge, and discharge, the duties of the office of council member, the duties of the office of council member, in the city of Elko New Market, in the city of Elko New Market, Minnesota, Minnesota, according to the law, according to the law, and the best of my ability and understanding the best of my ability and understanding. Congratulations. Thank you. Please repeat after me. I. I. Amanda Novak. Amanda Novak. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And that I will faithfully that I will faithfully execute and discharge execute and discharge the duties of the office of council member the duties of the office of council member in the city of Elko New Market in the city of Elko New Market Minnesota Minnesota according to the law according to the law and the best of, of my ability and understanding and the best of my ability and understanding congratulations Mr. Mayor please repeat after me I, I, Joseph Julius, Joseph Julius, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota, and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota, and that I will faithfully execute, and that I will faithfully execute, and discharge, and discharge, the duties of the Office of Mayor, the duties of the Office of Mayor. 
in the city of Elk New Market, Minnesota. In the city of Elk New Market, Minnesota. According to the law. According to the law. And to the best of my ability and understanding. And to the best of my ability and understanding. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Congratulations to everybody. And uh, Bryce, officially welcome to the city council. We're lucky to have everyone. Uh, presentations, proclamations, and acknowledgements. We do not have any tonight. Uh, so let's go to public comment. Is there anyone on tonight that cares to speak under public comment? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Gene. Uh, yeah, Gene, welcome. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Uh, I know this is in your, in your you're gonna talk about this, but I wanted to say, because you're gonna do it rather quickly, that it mistakenly says that uh, this week is not delivered to the Elko New Market. It is delivered to Elko New Market. I've been getting it for quite a few years. And this is actually a copy of last week's. I don't think it'll change your decision. And I don't think it'll change the staff's recommendation of recommending the new. So I think we might have lost Gene for a second. Tom, is that right? Does the I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, most newspapers, if you pay them to mail it to you, they will mail it to you. Um, they have advised us okay. that we are not part of their regular distribution territory or nor do they cover us on a regular basis, nor do they intend um, to do so. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Gene, I'm sorry you froze and we can't hear, <laughs> hear you anymore. Hopefully you can hear me, but uh, as always, I appreciate the thoughts. Uh, is there anyone else that cares to speak under public comment? Going once. Going twice. All right, we'll go ahead and close public comment. Um, so, annual organizational matters. So, with uh, the new year, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, um, we do have a number of housekeeping items that we do need to complete. Uh, the first one is to go through and identify uh, city council appointments um, and assignments uh, for the new year. Uh, this will be designating, first discussion item will be uh, designating an acting mayor. As council is aware, this individual would basically assume the role of the mayor in the event that the mayor is unavailable, incapacitated, unfortunately dies in office or some other similar circumstance. Um, and their role would basically be to conduct, uh, assume the, the responsibility of the position or in the simple event that Joe's not able to make a meeting, they would um, conduct the meeting in Joe's stead, which is the most frequently um, uh, needed role for that individual. Um, I know in recent years, uh, the mayor's expectation has been for the acting mayor to assume some additional responsibilities. Is that something you wanted to elaborate on, Mr. Mayor? No, I was just say you calling me out for missing meetings. That's kind of what that sounded like. I, oh, it's very, very infrequent. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, no, I was just going to, I was also going to add, yeah, I mean, I, I do, I mean, Kate's been acting mayor for, uh, well, I guess my first two years as mayor, and yeah, I, I, I'm sure Kate will tell you I get, I can be pretty annoying with just trying to find a sounding board to bounce stuff off of, so um, putting up with me is part of the duties of being acting mayor, so wanted to insert that and I'll stay out of the conversation. It has been a pleasure, Joe. <laughs> Thank you. Is this where we go ahead and we uh, nominate somebody? Yep, this would be a nomination and it would be I, a majority vote of the council for the assignment. I would like to uh, see if Josh Berg would be up for it. I don't know if I can handle Joe. I, I mean... <laughs> Now that you put it that way, I'm reconsidering. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. No, I, yeah, no, I, I, I've done it once before in my tenure and uh, for one year or whatever, but so I would happily, happily do it again. Any, any other nominations? Anyone opposed yeah. to Josh? I'm great with Josh. Okay. Good. If, if, if that's a consensus, we'd be looking for um, adoption of resolution 
2101 uh, designating uh, Council Member Josh Berg as the acting mayor. So moved. <laughs> wow. Second. I'll second. I'll second Amanda. <laughs> All right, Amanda, a motion by Amanda, second by Kate. Uh, Amanda, you vote first. Aye. I vote aye as well. Kate. Aye. Josh. Aye. Bryce. Aye. All right. You gotta go upstairs. You can't be down here. I got my city council. You can go upstairs, but in the basement. Thank you. <laughs> oh God, I'm not on it again. Crap. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I was doing the space bar thing, and then I. <laughs> All right. Designation of official paper. We should be at a pro. We should be pros at this we by now. Good, good lord. Special. Oh, here's what's happening. We're getting, we're all getting a little bit lax. Like everybody knows we yell at our kids. So <laughs> there's a friend mute or not. That's where I'm at these days. <laughs> Fair enough. Sorry. Uh, official newspaper. <laughs> yep. So uh, the memo outlined it. I mean, all, most papers are available in any community. I can get the New York Times if I want to have it um, delivered to me. Um, you can get the... Um, there is no paper that delivers automatically to everybody in town. The only paper that does cover us with any level of regularity is uh, the New Prague Times. Um, and if you look at the pricing, it's a little less per column inch uh, with, the, with uh, the sun, except that they do charge for retyping or typing. You don't have that charge on the other side. Um, in our uh, Linda's opinion, it tends to be fairly that tends to wash itself out a little bit. Plus, again, we're supporting a paper that actually um, does coverage of our community and does cover our, our uh, council meetings. Thank you, Patrick. Um, so uh, with that, unless the council would like to designate another paper, we'd be asking for a motion to adopt resolution 2102, designating the official paper of the city of Elko New Market as the New Prague Times. Before we motion, I just wanna quickly comment, um, and this kind of almost goes to Gene's point from earlier. The fact that New Prague Times is willing and has been willing to cover us and uh, provide information to the community and is continuing to do so, I think most of us have gotten to know Patrick pretty well. Um, I, I would, yeah, I, I, to me, it's a, it's a no-brainer. Um, that's my two cents. In fact, I'll make a motion to adopt Resolution 2102. Second. Motion by me, second by Josh. Amanda. Aye. Kate. Aye. Bryce. Aye. Josh. Aye. All right. Motion's adopted. What did I vote? Yes. Oh, I, I made the motion, okay. Mr. Mayor. So if you... by self to vote, I'll vote Correct. either way. Okay. Uh, so that's adopted. Um, designation of official depositories. And this one I have to stay out of. Correct. Um, we are recommending that we stay with the same depositories that we have had historically, um, which are the New Market Bank um, and the League of Minnesota Cities 4M fund. However, Mr. Mayor, since you are an employee of the bank, you would need to abstain from the vote on this particular item. Motion to adopt Resolution 2103. Second. It's a motion by Kate, second by Amanda. Amanda, you want to vote first? Aye. Kate. Aye. Bryce. Aye. Josh. Aye. No abstain. Uh, motion's adopted. So the remaining item that we have under the annual organizational matters is the various appointments to uh, council representatives, the very bo various boards, committees, et cetera. Uh, that can be done by motion. The way we've handled this in the past or the most efficient way we found to handle it is we go through, have the discussion, and then I will read them back to the council for a motion to do it all in one um, sweep. Um, if I can walk the council through the various items, um, the first item that we would want to have an appointment to, uh, I'm assuming we do not want to make any changes to scale um, Previous year, the councils decided that all council members are represented to scale, um, but that the mayor 
uh, would serve as the primary would serve as a representative on the scale executive committee with essentially the city administrator shadowing the, the mayor on that. Is everybody in agreement with that? Okay. The Scott Joint Prosecution Association. Um, that is basically the joint powers entity which uh, manages our contract with the county attorney's office. Uh, that is generally made up of all the administrators in the county with the chiefs of police or another senior staff member serving as the alternate for the city administrators. In reality, it's only one or two meetings a year to deal with the contract administration. We are recommending that we continue having the city administrator serve as the representative on the board with the um, chief of police serving as the alternate. Is there any concerns with that? Uh, the Joint Regional Training Facility, again, another scale Joint Powers Board. Uh, this is the Joint Powers entity which oversees the operations of the Joint Training Facility over by Jordan. Um, generally, this is made up of either elected officials, city administrators, or senior public safety staff. Um, I've served as the representative to this board uh, since it was established. And the chief of police has um, also served as the alternate uh, for that same time period. Uh, we are recommending that we continue with that arrangement. Is there any concerns with that? Um, the I-35 Solutions Alliance, of course, this is a, uh, an association made up of cities and counties located along the I-35 corridor from uh, Minneapolis South. Um, we have been a member of this organization for closing in on 10 years. Um, uh, the general logic for our participation in this organization is that any improvements that increase the capacity, whether it's transit or for vehicles on the corridor north of us, benefits us and our residents, both from a commuter and a goods and service standpoint. Um, ultimately, also, we uh, cultivating support for our improvements that we may be looking on 35, primarily the interchange um, or future transit um, is another benefit of participating in this organization. Most recently, Council Member Berg has served as the representative to this entity. And then I have served as the alternate um, as needed over that time frame. Josh, you've been doing this for how long now? Two years, maybe? Three years. Yeah. <clears throat> Trish, Trish was it before I was, so I jumped on when Trish left. Okay. I mean, it's something you. This is, I mean, I love this group. Um, it, it, the nice thing about this one is it's uh, the second Thursday of the month, 7 30 in the morning. So it makes it the easiest, I feel, out of a lot of the groups to be able to attend. However, with that said, I'm batting, or not batting, I'm at about 75% for the year, so it's not perfect. Um, it's not complete crap either. Um, and I've been trying to volunteer for like the budget finance committee. I got on, the, I um, did the nominating committee. So I'm trying to keep us there at the table and present and whatever, but um, I know I'm not probably maximizing 100%. Uh, so if others think that, uh, they can do a better job. I'm, I mean, I won't take offense if somebody wants to jump in. It's a great group and I love it. Um, I'm just, I wish I could be 100% of the time there. I just can't with work. Does anybody want to steal this privilege away from Josh? I don't think I could do a better job than Josh, but <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I do think that the timing for me, that's the best time for me to jump on something and I could I could most likely make a commitment where I could be there every meeting just because uh, my job requires more evening time for me to, to be gone. So mornings is great for me. And I'd be totally cool handing it off. Heck, I'd even back you up or tag team or, or whatever too. So, Yeah, that'd be awesome. As a suggestion, um, uh, with Bryce serving as the primary and maybe Josh serving as the alternate since he already has experience and is familiar with uh, – you know, the group and the background and the projects and whatnot's going on. Otherwise I could serve as the alternate. I like the idea of Josh being the alternate. As do I. Yeah, I have no objections. I just, 
you know, Josh, I just, if this is something that you really like and if it's something you really want to continue on, I don't want that to necessarily, I don't want you to feel like you have to give that up. If I start losing sleep over it, Bryce, I'll I'll tap you on the shoulder, say I want it back uh, at next year or something, Uh, but I'm totally cool. Fair enough. Sounds good. All right. So we got Bryce for I-35. Uh, next one is fire relief board. Uh, fire relief uh, board is made up of trustees and other elected members from the membership of the fire department. Um, state statute provides that uh, we can have two representatives on that. Traditionally, it's a council member and the city administrator. Uh, we are would be voting members of the board and our purpose for being there is that our taxpayers are basically the underwriter for the pension and the investment decisions that are made by the board. And so that's why we're there. Typically, um, we do not attend every single meeting since a lot of their uh, board meetings are related to like planning the fundraisers and those types of things. Um, But we do attend the meetings where they're actually having those financial uh, discussions. Uh, Currently, Kate is serving as the representative on the board Also with that, uh, the person that serves as the fire relief board representative has also traditionally served as the representative to the, um, uh, excuse me, the fire district work group um, because of the connection, they're just the fire department specialist. That is a separate appointment, um, but I just wanted to point out that those two sometimes go um, hand in hand. when you're appointed. Uh, the fire relief board, excuse me, not the fire relief board, the fire district work group typically meets two to three times a year, primarily um, reviews and makes recommendations related to the budget and, con- and the contracts. Um, the fire relief board representative will also work on negotiating the MOU related to the pension contribution, but that has been adopted last year with a three-year window. So whoever's appointed this year would not have that responsibility. I still really enjoy being on that board. So if nobody else has a huge want to do it, I'll gladly stay. I really like the consistency on the board or with having you as part of that, Kate. I would absolutely want you to continue on. Does anyone feel or believe differently? All yours, Kate. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what about representation in the fire district work group? Um, would we want to? Kate's currently serving in that capacity as well. Would the council want to continue that? Does Kate want to continue that? I would. I would do both. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Um, the community and civic events committee. Uh, this is basically the council liaison to that group. That group, of course, is made up of representatives from these organizations that support or host civic and community events or assist with city events over the course of the year. Uh, we also have representatives from the Parks Commission uh, that serves on it. And because of the overlap, um, given the nature of the events and facilities, and then what Council member, uh, former council member Seeprasad was the representative on that committee for the last two years. Um, so there is a vacancy there. There's nobody currently. I see Amanda jumping up and down. <laughs> you want Amanda? I'm interested in this one very much so. <laughs> you will do very Amanda? well with this one, Amanda. Anyone oppose? Nope. It's all yours, Amanda. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Minnesota Valley Transit Authority. Of course, this is our, we're an ex officio non-voting member of the MVTA board. Um, the Met Council does not have a similar board for influence. The MVTA is an opt-out and it's actually run by the cities that are served by it. Um, our participation at this point is really to build relationships and provide input on the services they do provide as it might impact our residents and build the groundwork for potential extension of services to the city in the future, some point, um, and assist in their planning efforts for expanding services. Um, Currently, Amanda is serving as the representative uh, to this board. I sure am. 
Um, I will say that I went to one in-person meeting and then everything went virtual. So there hasn't been a lot of opportunity. You know, it's, it's more difficult to, you know, gain those relationships being remote and when they're, you know, going through their agenda and getting things done. So I don't have strong feelings either way. I'm happy to stay there or if somebody else wants it, you're up. <laughs> Yeah, I, this is one of those ones I always run into scheduling issues with. Um, does anybody feel this is something you want to do? Amanda, are you willing to continue on? Yep, it's fine by me. All right, it's all yours. Thank you, Amanda. Mm -hmm. uh, the on a related transportation item is the Unified Transit Management Plan Committee. So this is the steering committee for the county's Unified Transit Management Plan development, which is basically a unified approach to the, how we provide transit and how we plan to provide transit within Scott County going into the future. Um, it, there's been a lot of discussion that after that plan is completed that this body might turn into a standing body which would basically become like the um, Scott County Transit Board or something like that that would continue to provide oversight and direction and recommendations related to transit in the county. Um, they really, really, really want elected officials for uh, this process. Um, I ended up uh, serving on this by uh, default um, uh, with a previous council member leaving. So uh, I have been serving that capacity. We did not have hardly any meetings this last year um, due in part to COVID. Uh, it's typically a monthly meeting, typically in the evenings, but I there it's not known at this point um, what time, what day of the week that will be going forward. I'll take it unless someone wants it. Okay, um, did you want I, it? I, I, either way, Joe, if you want it, you can have it. Otherwise, I'd do it. Let's you and I just maybe alternate or something. I'll tag team it. I'll be the primary and you can be the alternate and we'll see how that Sounds goes. good. Perfect. Okay. So I think we've discussed all the positions. So what I'd like to do is run through what we've discussed and then somebody can say, I make a motion to make the appointments as presented once I'm finished, unless you have any questions. So uh, the mayor. Talk is about the, the, oh, did we talk about the appeals board one? Oh, you're right. I did miss appeals board. Thank you. Um, thank you, Amanda. I must have um, cruised by it. So the administrative appeals board is the board that's identified within city code to hear appeals related to utility bills. And um, they have the authority to make adjustments within certain criteria to utility bills. They always have, individuals always have the ability to appeal to the city council. Um, on a typical basis, we'll process somewhere around um, a dozen or so um, appeals on an annual basis. You will see times at which that can increase, um, but that's pretty typical. Um, Josh has been serving in that capacity um, over the last year, and he can maybe talk a little bit more about it from a council member perspective. The other members of the board are myself and currently um, Mark Nagel as the assistant to the city administrator. Um, other people who served as the other staff person have been um, Sandy when we had a separate city clerk for my position. Yeah, uh, I mean, I've enjoyed being on this one. Um, it's been, I don't know, I think we've, it, I can see pros of keeping consistency. I can also see pros of changing it up, get, getting different perspectives in there, but um, I've, I've enjoyed this one. And then the flexibility of this one too, um, it's working around schedules, which has made it very, 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 very nice. So I'm happy to say unless anybody else wants the experience of it. Yeah, I typically don't insert um, on these appointments, but I would uh, echo the thought that there is the value in having some level of consistency, at least for more than one year on the board for purposes of being able to handle um, appeals consistently as they come in and that um, institutional knowledge can be valuable. I agree. Yeah, I'm okay with that. 
Anyone uh, opposed to Josh continuing on? All right, thank you, Josh. So I'll move on with uh, summarizing uh, the decisions that were made and then we'll be looking for a motion. So the mayor would serve as the primary and all the council members as alternatives as representatives to scale. The mayor is the representative to scale executive committee with the city administrator as the alternate. The city administrator and then the chief of police is the alternate representative to the Scott Joint Prosecution Association. The city administrator and the chief of police is the alternate as representatives to the Joint Regional Training Facility Board. Um, Bryce Schenke and the city and as the primary and council member Josh as the alternate as representatives to the I-35 Solutions Alliance. Council member uh, Timmerman and the city administrator appointed to the fire relief board. Um, uh, Kate would also be serve as the representative to the fire district work group. Um, Amanda would serve as the representative to the community and civic events committee. Uh, Amanda would serve as the representative to the MVTA. Josh would serve as the city council representative on the administrative appeals board. And then um, the mayor would serve as the city council representative to the unified transit management plan with council member Kate serving as the alternate. Um, if everybody's in agreement with those um, discussed appointments, we just look for a motion to make those appointments as presented. So moved. Sorry, did you mention the appeals on that? Um, I did. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. All right, anyone wanna make a motion? So moved. It's a motion by Kate. Second. Second by Amanda. Let's vote. Let's go. Amanda, you want to vote first? Aye. Kate? Aye. Bryce? Aye. Josh? Aye. I'll vote aye as well. Motion. Uh, motion quick, best. Bryce. Uh, so we slash I am on the nominating committee right now. Uh, we got votes coming in until the end of the day Friday. I'll loop you in um, because the votes are coming back to two others that are on that, Tom Wolf and uh, Dan Keeley from Burnsville. So I'll CC you in on the response because I've been kind of leading some of the emails back and forth and introduce you to those guys um, for that. Sounds good. Okay, on the consent agenda. Does anybody have anything on the consent agenda that they would like to pull or discuss or had questions on? If not, uh, someone wants to make a motion, they'd be welcome to. Motion to approve consent agenda. Motion by Kate. Second, Shinky. The second by Bryce. Amanda. Aye. Kate. Aye. Bryce. Aye. Josh. I didn't hear you, did you? Aye, sorry. Okay, oh boy, as well. Consent agenda passes. We have no public hearings tonight. We have no general business tonight, so, all right. I think the first thing under administration was city council meeting format. It's safe to assume we don't wanna make any changes to the format. Okay, well, we're gonna go ahead and say that's a safe assumption. Tom, did you have anything else for administration or should we move on to public works? I did not have anything additional on administration, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, I don't think Corey is on. Uh, Corey is not here tonight. Um, okay. I spoke with him today and I had him go home to try and get some sleep before he goes out snow plowing tonight. Um, the one item he did want me to talk about, unless you have questions about the monthly report, was the ice rink. Um, opening. So as you may have heard, a lot of communities are having difficulty um, getting their rinks open this year because of the weather. It was a relatively mild December and it's been difficult to get and we haven't had any really sharp cold snaps to build a good base. Uh, Corey was originally hoping to try and have the rinks officially open this week until we had our weather yesterday, which 
set us back. And now we have a snow event, which means that's where the resources in the department are going to be for the next two days. Um, when I spoke to him, he's hoping to get it op the rinks open next week. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't ice there, and it doesn't mean that people aren't skating on it. But we usually don't consider them open and run the lights at night until we have a good enough base that we feel they're fully safe and operable for regular skating. We don't want to encourage people to be on there if they're a little on the marginal side for obvious reasons. Um, any questions on that? Not seeing any. Okay. I'm going to police. Um, just a few things. Uh, just let you know our COVID protocols, we're still following them. Um, we're trying to limit our contact on scene. Um, one thing from the emergency management aspect I wanted to go over, uh, our police department last week, the members that desired to do so all were uh, vaccinated, um, received our first vaccine shots for COVID. Um, part of that as well, I the uh, at the same clinics that we got last week, the fire department also, any firefighter that wanted their vaccine shot could get it as well. Um, we will get follow-up shots in the next uh, three weeks to 28 days. Um, the shots were administered through the Scott County uh, Department of Public Health um, as part of the overall Minnesota plan. Um, we... Uh, no officers fell ill where they couldn't work. Um, we did notice some minor um, reactions to the uh, COVID vaccine, but they were very minor um, reactions. Like I said, no one had to call in sick or anything like that. So the police department has received their first shots and so have the fire department. I'll give you updates when we're all done, but just let you know that uh, process was very well done. Um, through the Scott County Public Health, kudos to them. The clinics were um, ran every five minutes, five people every five minutes received the shot. And so they were able to run through 300 an hour if they had to. Um, and they were done at three different spots throughout the county. So it was a great process, but I just wanted to uh, advise you that we started that process. And then ask if anybody had any questions about that before I moved on. All right, uh, next, just a couple of updates. Uh, big case that got some media attention, the Elko Speedway um, incident that happened uh, last month. Just to let you know that case has basically come to a close. Um, all the uh, tips and info we were getting from the public dried up and uh, resulted the investigation and basically charging one person with a couple of different counts of uh, trespassing and aiding and abetting criminal damage to property. Any questions on that? All right, uh, last thing we continue in the new police department to have tours. We had the Boy Scouts, or excuse me, the Cub Scouts in um, and they took a tour and actually absolutely loved it. Um, I included the picture in my report there. Um, we continue to, uh, as people come in, um, uh, give them a tour if they desire. We, I just want to let you know that in the first couple months we've been there, we've had a quite a few number of people we've actually been able to have come into the police department and use the facilities for actual police work, like the interview room. Um, and that is just it's totally allowed us to do our job a lot better and to serve the public a lot more. So I wanna say thank you for that. And then in the interest of time, uh, I wanna open it for questions if there are any about the monthly report. I have a question on the monthly report. I'm curious though, we've had the roundabout open for a bit now. Are we still accident free in the roundabout? Uh, no, we're, uh, we're there was a accident, um, I'm trying to remember the details of it. There was one, it was uh, minor, relatively minor injuries, even though I believe it was a motorcycle mm. that was involved um, with a vehicle, but uh, relatively minor 
um, would have been catastrophic had it been a full speed collision at that intersection, but due to the lower speeds of the roundabout, um, there were no permanent injuries. So next to the tracks of uh, somebody who looks like they flew over it? Uh, you know, that was before it actually opened. Um, there's there's snow tracks. Talking about. What's that? There were snow tracks. I was just, I, I saw the snow oh, track or somebody. I, did, I didn't see, I didn't see those. Yeah. Um, somebody drove over it before it was open and tore up all, everything, but um, I haven't seen that one, no. Were they wide like a car or an ATV? It was a car. Okay. You said that pretty confidently. Bryce, uh, why don't you come in tomorrow to the police department? We can talk. <laughs> How do you know it wasn't a truck? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, if there's anything else, Mayor, about the report, stats, anything like that? Well, I've started, uh, since the year's ended, I've started my data collection for the annual report. I hope to have that out by February. Um, we'll be adding that to the website, and I'll do a uh, presentation uh, to the council when that's done to summarize the year. Thank you. Um, no fire department news. Engineering, Rich, you have anything? Uh, nothing for you. All right. Community development? I don't have anything to report other than what was in the packet. Um, if you have any questions about anything that was in my report, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Anyone have any questions for Renee? All right. Thanks, Renee. Mm -hmm. uh, parks? No report. Uh, CCEC. I suppose we don't have the, well, yeah, we don't have a liaison right now, so there's probably no, no. report. Um, CCEC will be meeting next Tuesday, our first meeting for the year. Oh, awesome. Linda, I'm sorry. I didn't see, I didn't see you were nope, on. Nope, that's okay. That's okay. I'm kind of hidden. I don't like to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, others. So, uh, scale, there was no exec meeting for January. Um, those that were on the general membership meeting on Friday got, um, I don't know, we did something different. We had Eric Thurwanger of Think Great um, talk about leadership in chaos. I thought it was a really good presentation. I think it's recorded if anyone didn't get a chance to see it. Um, let me know or let Tom know and we'll make sure you get, uh, make sure you can see it. But no, it was really good. It was something different and I don't know, it's probably my, favorite meeting as my term as chair, so. Uh, MVTA. You can hear Light McQueen, I'm having a little toddler drama here. Um, I don't have anything we have not met since our last council meeting. Okay. Uh, I-35. I was not able to make it this morning. Uh, I don't see Tom Wolf on right now. Otherwise, maybe when he, if he comes back, he can give another update. But I know Tom will send out some stuff from the meeting. Okay. Uh, Chamber of Commerce. I don't know, Bryce. Are you still you still want to be our kind of unofficial liaison right now? Yeah, for now. Sure. Um, you report? Yeah. Well, we have uh, three new board members who are going to be starting uh, next month. Then we'll do our elections of positions at that time. Um, and then we're just kind of looking over our, our uh, events calendar for the year, um, just getting things put together, um, being very hopeful that uh, we can do some in-person stuff. Um, and then we're gonna begin uh, interviews for our admin assistant. So we're hopeful that we'll get a, a great candidate uh, out of the people that we have. That's about it. You have a good candidate pool? Um, I think we had four or five applicants. Nice. And a, couple, a couple that look pretty promising. Good deal. All right. Well, that concludes reports. That was reports. Um, that, uh, uh, discussion, discussion by council. Do you have anything? anything? I have one quick 
question about the League of Minnesota Cities um, training offerings. I don't remember what it's called. It's not coming to me. Uh, there's the newly elected officials, and then there's typically also an experienced officials um, training conference um, in the first part of the year. So if any council members have a desire to attend, you simply need to contact Linda and she'll get you signed up. And I think what I read, it's like four 90 minute sessions on four separate days, at least for the experienced one. I did not look at the newly elected. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't looked at the, at how it's actually structured this year in the virtual environment. I haven't been there, but I will say that I've been there and asked does joe fa sound funny to anyone else or is it just me he sounds funny <laughs> yeah i was Sorry, just gonna ask if anyone else had all garble from him there was oh, cool. i was yeah. enjoying it for a movie thing <laughs> i was, I was gonna write amanda her. total darth vader right there I was gonna. I was gonna go more with Jabba the Hutt the way it was reverberating, but. <laughs> but, but do I still sound garbled? Yeah, I think you'll have to probably sign off. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Mayor, are you gonna log out and log back in? Maybe Kate, if you wanna. Wait a minute. Oh, would that be me or would that be Josh? Josh. It'd be Josh at this point. Yep. We can give him a minute. It sounded like he was coming back in. It, it appeared as though he was coming back in. Or not. <laughs> All right. Was well, there anything else, Amanda, that you wanted to uh, get clarification of, or should we? Uh, the mayor just came back into the meeting. Oh, all right. Mr. Mayor, are you there? Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks for being patient. Did we close the meeting down yet? Or we no, we on? didn't. We're still on council discussion. We were um, waiting for you, sir. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, we can close the meeting. <laughs>